okay um like i said i will never let them escape um however they might make me experience things it's so nasty it's just disturbing <laughs> in my brain right now they're creating thoughts and disturbing uh ways to break me down in this pedophilia tactics that you're going to hear others have experienced what you listen what you see up there is a picture of a friend and his beautiful family he has like four little girls you know they're beautiful kids you know um and i was able to see that normally when he only had like one or two uh i remember his when i was able to look at the picture of his family his kid normally right when they were like babies when one of the oldest was the baby and all that i was i remember seeing normally now never it's never gonna be normal again you hear the noise campaign it's because they're trying to disturb me uh while i'm talking about what's happening because what they try to do is when they make you experience things in these disturbing ways they tr they want you to identify to this because i'm not identifying this i know it's not me and the noise campaign is meant to like oh my gosh we saw what just happened to your brain that we know it's not being manipulated to you what well, they know is being manipulated this is how they've been manipulating others too and they try to get you to feel guilty for the way you perceiving these children when they know that they're the one forcing you to have these disturbing perceptions and ways of perceiving children with these pedophilia ways. It's nasty. Uh, and your whole ecosystem is supposed to be like, no, it's you. We're not manipulating you. We're just watching what's happening to your brain. That your brain is just, we're just observing your brain with no manipulation. Oh, actually, we are, we're doing something. We're matching. We're matching to you when you were a kid. And they send and make these childlike individuals try to talk because I think they, they, the purpose of using childlike individuals is like a childlike individual, oh, you know, we, we're children, we're like children, so we don't have logic, right? I think that's some reason why they want to use that. I'm like, they know it very well. They call it being a war because they are trying to break you down and make you acceptive of this breakdown so you can identify with it. But this trash, these bottom feeders, as you can see on, on this side, those are the neighbors and the people around that every time they make me experience things like that, when you see, I see this kid over there and they try to create his thoughts, these people are supposed to make noise campaign and be like, oh, we're gonna watch you die and then go in the run in the apartments. This is called trying to gaslight you into identifying with the manipulation they've involved themselves in. These people are signed to break you down, make noise camping. Those at least, you should see some of the other neighbors that don't want to be seen. It makes this even more like, wow. So when I'm experiencing these things, when you see this kid, the, this family, I've, I've seen his kid before when he was, they were younger, at least one of them, one or two of them, before August 19th, was able to see that normally. Now, nasty perceptions stimulations and disgusting reactions and they try to create battles and try to rewind my memories of that or try to find ways to know you think like that when you're a kid if you were a kid you'll see that like i'm not a kid first of all second of all is not true you are making me experience these ways of thinking and then try to implant that in my memories i know as a kid i did something stupid to myself as a child i was a child in eighth grade middle school you nasty little life are renowned to manipulate grown people men and women to experience disturbing stimulation to our children and manipulate even the memory to make them acceptive of these things you even torture children sorry i shouldn't even say that you manipulate people including men and women to experience things in these disturbing ways and you even manipulate their memories to make them believe that this experience is something they've experienced before oh and creating false memories to try to make somebody identify with the pedophilia things you do. Those testimonies that you're gonna hear that validates me that I'm not the only one who experienced these nasty things, but this is done systematically. That is a, t a tactic, a protocol tactic that they, they utilize. And this trash, this trash is trying to get you to accept what they do this, these things. They are trying to make you, these low lives are supposed to make you feel acceptive and identifying to whatever nastiness do you re respond. They say whatever they need to, they try to 
make you think in this weird, illogical ways. That's their job. These people that you see come in all shape and form. A lot of the people that you live around you are essential and needed because they're there 24 seven to make noise campaign or to do the loud noise, to try to make you believe that's you, you are paid always like, no, you work for pedals. And your job is to do these things. It's not to do this thing, it's to make me accept these pedophilia things that you do to people. So you can be like, oh, you are paid though. So nasty. But I will never let them live their fantasy. They've been doing these tactics to others. They've been using these methods on others, using this pedophilia ways of thinking. And they use this childlike, well, this, those are another childlike people. This is like, if you see the childlike people, that it will be another level. It, it, they don't even want they know better as i'm saying that they try to do they know better it will look even more obvious so they try to send people here that are a little bit more like adulty like more mature because if you see the child like individuals oh my gosh at that point you know it's like these people just this 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 these people are supposed to make me subscribe to i'm supposed to believe you should see them and they're like no we know what you we know what you found beautiful so you're disturbing trash you manipulate me. Of course, this program, in order to be able to manipulate you to experience these things, they have to know you. And with time, they get better because they can implant it in a way that it feels more natural, more organic. So with time, it becomes more like harder to, to, to recognize. And they even play with your memories. They play your thoughts. You play, it's for you to identify with the peripheral things they do to you. And they try to change everything in the pedophilia ways. Even adults, as is, I'm looking at an adult, they try to change this adult into a child. It was like, what the hell? They're nasty and they're pedophiles. And whatever illogicalness and way they make you think, target individual, do not subscribe. You know yourself. Their job is to break you and change you into something that you're not, somebody that you're not. Do not subscribe to these things. I won't be the first. I'm not the first, I won't be the last to say the same things. That they do this manipulation and try to make you be something that you're not. So stay strong. And know these bottom feeders, this, this, sorry, these bottom feeders, sorry, these people are dignified individuals. These are the bottom feeders the government uses. Are just the trash. Even though they're trashing you, they are the trash. So stay strong. He's trying to take over my mind, putting thoughts of pet. It's, like, it's disgusting, disgusting. This take this whole thing into account so much. I make it so dramatic. It is dramatic. It's somebody trying to end my life. It's somebody trying to end who I am as a person. It's somebody trying to take over my mind, putting thoughts of pet. It's, like, it's disgusting, disgusting, disgusting things. And you saw where I was going with that first word. Disgusting things that I don't even want to talk about because it makes me sick. I don't even like those words in my mind. But it is what it is. So I have no choice now but to acknowledge that there are people in my in my surroundings or whatever they're doing. I don't know how they do it. I don't care. I don't know if it's through weapons. I don't know. I don't care. I just often see highly disturbing pornographic images and videos, including highly disturbing pedophilia type of images and videos when I close my eyes. I can be free from this torture. Every day has been a miracle of survival. I also experience what is referred to as malodorance. This is the alteration of the smell sensation so that I am often made to smell various things, including smoke, burning, dirty diaper, or baby powder, which they sometimes combine with the pedophilia type of torture, including the threat of planted dreams and videos in my closed eyes. The targets were forced to perform homosexual acts on each other against their will and religion in order not to be beaten or killed. This is a common breakdown tactic of belief systems and the human will. In no-touch torture the techniques are more psychologically specialized for each target.
Most common examples include homosexual targets that are forced with voices that are derogatory to their lifestyle and similar mental images. Almost all targets are forced to view child pornography in their minds. What I say, playing with my dog, will that attack continue? I don't let them get me. Today, they continue with the programming of perversion, but this time they are aiming in the use. A people, better said young people, also children and homosexuals. When I aggravated them, I usually called demeaning names, and one of them is referring to homosexuals. For me, all of the slaves are misfits, society haters, scumbags, etc. No, I don't have anything personal against them, homosexuals, but as my way to aggravate the slaves, and since they love to use children for the torture and stalking, street theater ETC. Especially teenagers for the stalking at close range with an attitude, they are using them during my sleep in the perversion program and so you can imagine what the slaves of torture are pretending to do to me in the last days as today september 9th 07 anything i do either watching tv or reading of whatever i'm doing they brush me sort of say i feel like i'm aroused all day and i feel the palpitations in my genitals for what i'm thinking and since the attack comes so quickly i realized my programming has been set on auto in their central computers no handlers could do something like this that quick what make me realized the slaves are desperate to get me Unfortunately for them they are facing a strong wall where no matter how much their computers EAP me, I know I'm not changing. As I said, I feel like they've been set up a beam where I feel constantly stimulated. I'm talking sexually, like a heat in my genitalia, like getting aroused constantly, trying to make me feel uncomfortable, because it doesn't stop. Any part of the body. This technology can be used to sexually manipulate the target. It can make the target feel sexual arousal or it can sort of able to impose any information on the brain of a person, presumably by some kind of waves, which in the mind take the form of voices, thoughts and images and imagination. In addition to this kind of implanting information that they need, they manipulate the psyche so that the information is written into your memory. Then by stimulating the certain regions in the brain they can retrieve this information and present it as your own memory. This is the conclusion that can be made judging by the influence they have been making on me with their psychotronic weapons, for example artificial thoughts, imagination, and mental torture. Occasion, I was told I was going to be shot in the face. And it was an older guy. He was like really, really disgruntled and pissed off. Yeah, she's going to be shot in the face. You know, sound like an angry ass old person. You know, then a couple of days later, a female said the same thing. I'm going to get shot in the face. You know, stupid shit like that. But what I really noticed is with the voice of skull, it's a bunch of females. You know, and I'm like, bro, <laughs> really? You're not a woman. What? real woman would stalk another female or sit back and allow that to go on you you really think they they think it's nothing wrong with them basically you know they call me a retarded bitch and all of this here but i was top of my class and everything that i did you know every class i took i excelled in my i excelled academically so Miss Catherine Nestor. My name is Catherine Nestor and I'm from Pennsylvania. This commission has spoken of a long history of abuse of the human research subject. Although no one mentioned MK Ultra today, President Clinton recently apologized for this. My young child and I have been used as non-consensual test subjects. We have been subjected to co-intel pro-like stalking remote neural monitoring and electromagnetic torture resulting in psychological and physical damage. And I won't go into the details of that because I have four pages written in here that is very similar to Connie's testimony. Please do not wait 70 years to investigate this. I ask Dr. Amy Gutman to begin today. There is new work for the commission for human subject protection on our shores. And please give us a dramatic response, Susan, and please give us a congressional hearing. 
Thank you. Mrs. Marshall. Good afternoon. My name is Connie Marshall. I'm a formal mayoral candidate from Louisville, Kentucky. I have never been involved in any criminal activity. I found a document in my bank account that said, problem with Kentucky government, check federal government paperwork and file before releasing information to anyone. I am an eight-year victim survivor of assaults by directed energy weapons. The torture I've experienced consists of body overheating, body extremely cold, seizures, heart pain, ear aches, itching behind eyes, burning behind eyes, swelling, headaches, involuntary movement of my limbs, exhaustion, speeding and heart racing, hair coming out by the handfuls as if I've had chemotherapy, mind paralysis, being hypnotized or placed in a trance-type state, being tracked by a drone or satellite, controlled dreams, sleep deprivation, V2K, which is voice to skull, projected sound, extreme muscle spasms, and extreme muscle cramps, being made to fall down, blue circles around the pupils of my eyes, and I'm here and you can look at them if you like, low frequency noises in my home, high frequency noises in my home, sexual stimulation, numerous electrical appliances in my home are destroyed, four computers, two fax machines, seven telephones, four CD players, VCR, DVD players, electrical igniter switch on my furnace, washer and dryer, air conditioner, also my car radio, CD player, and engine were destroyed. I am watched in my home 24 hours a day and followed, followed around everywhere I go, though I do not have a criminal history. When I ran for mayor of my town, I was also attacked at debates and forums. My website is www. Military medical ex research. Um, I, too, believe my experience is referred to as no-touch torture, utilizing defense technologies. Um, Jonathan Marino, he basically predicted all this uh, a number of years ago in his book, Un Undue Risk. Um, I'm asking you to help initiate a congressional investigation. Uh, we've all come a long way. This is what is needed. Uh, we want to have the accounts of this extreme human rights abuse that's going on in our country uh, documented and heard, all of the accounts. Uh, we also need what was done during the Clinton administration, which is a major declassification of some of these documents that are hiding what's been going on. Um, I speak for many when I say we've suffered long enough. My personal experience has been 10 years. I've been vilified. I've been ostracized. I've been tortured. I have burns on my body. I'm an American. I have rights. The answer to the question, the big question today, could it happen today? The answer is yes. It is happening today. It is happening for some of us every day. Hi, I'm Deborah Paulson from Kenosha, Wisconsin. I'm going to refer to a paper from Professor McCoy at the University of Wisconsin on no-touch torture. He talks about a total assault on all senses and sensibilities, auditory, visual, tactile, temporal, temperature, and survival, refined through years of practice. Sensory disorientation relies on a mix of sensory overload and sensory deprivation via banal procedures, isolation, then intense interrogation, heat and cold, light and dark, noise and silence, for a systematic attack on all human stimuli. I've been a um, human subject for experimentation for almost two years. And went to bed. I had all, and they had, um, all of a sudden, I, I had been there like four or five days and the used their telephone um, so I could make airline, you know, flight, because all I wanted to do was leave Chicago. And um, so I figured I'd make my plans in a hotel. I didn't think that they could hack the hotel. I was very naive back then. I didn't understand the full technology <laughs> spectrum or even um, interest, you know, and all I wanted to do was leave. So um, I was at a hotel on a relatively high floor and they had um 
all of a sudden I, I had been there like four or five days and the night before I was attacked really bad, um, I noticed a maintenance man about 10 or 11 o'clock at night messing with all of the lights up and down the hallway. And as, um, I'm sorry, I get kind of upset when I think about this because it's really messed up. Um, and my spidey sense went off and I was really kind of nervous about like what the hell he was doing out there because it, 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 he was kind of a sinister, he was real creepy kind of person. So, um, so the next night, I believe it was a Friday night, I went to bed. I had all of the doors, all the locks on the door, even the, um, the, the one that kind of like goes over that you can't open from the outside. I had everything locked up, figured I was safe. Um, I went to bed maybe about one o'clock in the morning. I woke up about four thirty, five o'clock in the morning, uh, bleeding out of every hole, uh, sick. Someone was in my room. Um, or had been in my room, uh, food was missing. My dogs were traumatized. Um, I had been obviously uh, sexually assaulted, uh, in all the worst ways possible. I got up. First thing I did was vomit. And all I wanted to do was just, I was just in shock. Um, there was a do not disturb sign on my door. And I didn't do this. And there was um, lotion all over my bathroom floor. Um, all I wanted to do was just get on a plane and get the hell away from everybody. And I was, um, you know, very, very sick and in a lot of pain. Um, I had already been denied a rape kit when I owned my house um, and woke up. And um, my hair had obviously been pulled out and there were earplugs in my bed. And I felt like someone had done something. I went to Payless Community Hospital um, under the directions of a, a non-compromised police officer who told me that if anything happened to go right to the hospital. So I did. And I had a compromised doctor who treated me like a third-rate citizen and said she would give me an STD test and a drug test. But that doesn't, but she refused me a rape kit. And, um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> hello, everyone. My name is Leslie Crawford. I'm here from the state of Michigan. I wanted to speak about um, biotechnology applications being utilized on my person. I have um, medical reports showing eye damage being done to my eyes. Mm. My eyes does not have a mirror image. In 2015, I began to experience what some call V2K, or voice to skull. This involves the projection of voices, noises, and music directly into my mind to communicate with me in real time and at the speed of thought. And it also includes the manipulation of thoughts, emotions, and perceptions in the person's mind. Additionally, the targeting is all highly perverted and sexual as well as destructive and violent. The targets were forced to perform homosexual acts on each other against their will and religion in order not to be beaten or killed. This is a common breakdown tactic of belief systems and the human will. In no-touch torture the techniques are more psychologically specialized for each target. Most common examples include homosexual targets that are forced with voices that are derogatory to their lifestyle and similar mental images. Almost all targets are forced to view child pornography in their minds. And vice versa. And I am a victim of organized stalking, electronic harassment, microwave torture, B2K abuse, and I'm asking you to help us end this crime against humanity, which has impacted men, women, children all around the world.
Hi, I'm Wan from Malaysia. My family are targeted individual. We are victims of cyber torture. And I will not give up. I will fight to the end. And I'm a victim of organized stalking. Uh, we need stalking, this to stop. Electronic That's harassment. It. And I'm speaking to you on International Targeted Individual Day. I live in the U.S., in Illinois. And I'm a victim of organized stalking. Uh, we need stalking, this to stop. Electronic That's harassment, it. microwave torture. I've been a targeted for nine years. 24-7. Please become more aware of this crime and those that the crime is being committed against. We need your support and help in ending this crime. Hello, my name is Wendy Brown. I'm a targeted individual who is living in New Zealand, but my targeting began in California I'm an American citizen, and the targeting continues in New Zealand. I'm making this video in um, remembrance of Targeted Individual Day, our third annual Targeted Individual Day. And I'm asking that every honest-hearted human being open their eyes to a crime. My name is Jeanette. I am 56 years old, and I live in Baltimore, Maryland. I am a victim of covert electronic harassment and torture. I am a targeted individual. Why? Because it hurts. I need help. I need you guys to come get me. It's brutally painful. I have a house, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, first floor, second floor, two garage, backyard, land, everything. Can't live in my house. My neighbors are shooting direct energy weapons through my house. I hold my heart like this, you know why? Because it hurts. I need help, I need you guys to come get me. <sighs> come get me. You feel that you've been in justice? Uh, you mean as far as the Justice Department feeling me? Well, in terms of your uh, uh, being a victim. You mean what I'm feeling? Yeah, I, explain a little bit to me how sure. you uh, sure. Yourself well, as being I have actual photographs of burns on my body. When I went to my doctor, uh, the response was, how do I know you didn't do that to yourself? How do you even address that? I've passed two psychological evaluations, not one, but two. The one physician said, you're mentally sound as a bell. He said, I don't have any idea what's going on with you. When I go to sleep, when I go to try to sleep, I feel like I'm being lit up like a Christmas tree. I feel every cell in my body just bouncing out of my body. I can't even describe it. I get uh, electric shock of my rectum. I get electric shock of my nose. I've woken up with burns on the end of my tongue. I've had burns on the palms of both of my hands. I vibrate. I vibrate. I can barely hold a piece of paper without quivering. Does that answer your question? I'm trying to find what's the source of the... The source are these exotic weapons. They talk about in 2970, but if you would pass it, it might give other communities the courage to do the same thing and show our defense department we are not the enemy. We are not to be attacked. We are not terrorists. Most of us are defenseless women. I am currently a speech language pathologist working in private practice with young children. I had a seven year old client who has autism and she was the most significantly affected of all of my clients. I eventually had to tell this client to go to another clinic and they used her to threaten the most torture in me as well as their most extreme forms of torture. For several months, she would cry and scream horribly during our therapy sessions despite having a great day at school. This was highly unusual behavior for her, as she usually behaved very well during her therapy sessions and had been making incredible progress on all of her therapy goals. This was used to threaten extreme torture on me, making me scream and cry, etc. They would make the kids act out the kinds of torture that would later be done on me. For example, they would also sometimes make her bite her hand, threatening to make me bite my hands, as they often do. One day, she had a large, severe bite mark on her arm. She has also grabbed her crotch, saying, ow, and this was used to threaten me with severe sexual torture. 
One day I was observed, one day I also observed her gasping for air a few times in the same way that I do when I am being more severely suffocated. The suffocation had been in a mild state for a while up until this point. Many of their torture methods are cyclical in severity. Right after I saw this child being suffocated, then I began to experience very extreme suffocation all day, every day, for about two months straight, and that's also when they made it worse when I eat. Then I also work with a four-year-old little girl with Down syndrome, as well as her five-year-old sister who also has Down syndrome. I observed both of these girls suddenly grabbing their genitals in pain and verbalizing, ow. I observed this at least on one or two occasions for each of them during their separate sessions. During one session, I observed one of my three-year-old clients suddenly grab his crotch and lean forward in his chair. And then he made a frightening grimace of severe pain. I asked him what was wrong and if he needed to use the restroom, but he said no to having to use the restroom and was not able to verbalize anything more. Due to the nature of the torture I have been experiencing has been highly sexual in nature and highly perverted, involving many combinations of sensory and motor manipulation of my mind and body and of the people around me. This includes many different types of zaps to varying degrees to the genitals, butt, anus, and the entire pelvic area. This also includes many kinds of movements, such as the rocking, swaying, jolting, vibrating, and shaking of my entire body or various body parts, specifically in a sexual way. The severe vibration is a highly noxious stimuli and is very intolerable. They sometimes do pulses or throbbing sensations on the genitals too, etc. There are also body movements such as rocking my pelvic area back and forth, repeated rubbing sensations, the sensation of something going up my crotch and in and out, etc. They also often force vaginal discharges and zap my genitals at the same time. These sexual assaults are present throughout the day, every day, and anytime I am awakened at night, every night. is highly synchronized in real time. They can see everything in my environment before I can, and if something is hidden out of my sight, they can tell me where it is, if they want me to see it. This is Jeremy Radlow. I'm uh, here to tell you that non-consensual human experimentation is happening in the United States today. I've been the subject of this experimentation for more than my five years. Calling these ex activities experimentation is truthful, but possibly distracting. I think the criteria governing the selection of experimentees will prove to be a much bigger scandal than the experimentation itself. The psychological torture protocol that's part of the so-called experimentation includes, but is not limited to, the use of non-lethal weapons and mind-invasive technology. Sleep deprivation, pain center stimulation, and worse, are used against subjects. While some experimentees have found foreign objects in their bodies suggesting implantation, most have not. Receiverless mind invasive technology has been demonstrated under laboratory conditions, but the most likely explanation is that experimentees are implanted with foreign objects either too small to appear on commercially available scanning equipment or designed to be indistinguishable from the surrounding tissue. These activities are highly deceptive, use clandestine technology, and have the fingerprints of the CIA all over them. Uh, Eight billion brains on the planet, potentially, read them, brains, underwater. How do you explain this is happening to Len? How do you rationalize? Come in private, hold on. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can I talk? Um, Here's how I do my studies, and I, I wanted to find the commonalities, but I have to throw away the ones I'm uncertain about that are true targets. You know, maybe there's natural schizophrenia. There's a whole bunch of chemical imbalances, et right, cetera. Right. These weapons can actually induce and mimic all those diseases and effects. Um, but the conversations, the scripts they're called, 
are always the same. I've heard them all. They're slightly tailored for each individual, but they're scripts. Um, and they're meant to confuse the very derogatory. Uh, that's just typical breakdown. If, you know, if you've ever been to boot camp, you're a, you're a worm until you're mm -hmm. part of the team. And why would you want to break down the ego of that person to rebuild it? So this gets into creating Manchurian candidates, split personality spies, and uh, information couriers, people that will carry the V2K. So they'll say, we're the Russian government, we're the Chinese government, we're evil aliens, we're Satan's, you know, satanic ritual abuse. Uh, we're, and I've heard all the stories. One guy believed it was... Uh, some 14-year-old kid with an Xbox that lived next door. The trickery really is that great when you're under hypnosis that people will believe something other than a massive government uh, could do this. Um, and so, anyway, what you know, our inter my interview with Len, he very well described a typical breakdown script that's used on almost all the TI victims. TI stands for targeted individuals. Um, some of them are pretty crazy. They go, they have names like Alice in Wonderland, Wizard of Oz. Um, and those are the confusion tactics. And when they're breaking down the ego of the human through all the pains and tortures and, and the verbal breakdown, um, these are typical CIA torture scripts. Oh, wow. that, that's the thing. The rest of the cases, they were sent back to the CIA to handle them in turn. Are you? Well, don't worry, Stephen. I think a few of them were fired. Yeah. Well, the rest. Oh, is, that, wow. that's the thing. The rest of the cases, they were sent back to the CIA to handle them internally. Whatever the hell that. Where think do you about think that. You're the CIA. That must mean there is such a lack of fearing any sort of accountability for crying out loud while on assignment. 1400 you must have not been doing any job well even if you had to look at it to make sure you knew what it was don't you just need to look at one right you're like i better check the other 1399 yes, just to be safe yes i better Each check the other 1300 labeled tax things unbelievable oh my god and the guy with the six-year-old twice yeah twice, twice with the six-year-old so out of the and here's the scariest part out of the 10 instances uh that are described in the report only one person was ever charged with anything yeah. With anything. Comment below. Do you guys know this story? This this should be catnip for the media, right? Think about it. You've yeah. got you've got yeah. this lewd behavior. You've got corruption at the highest levels of government, right? Aaron Brockovich, something about fake tits and tap water. Yeah. <laughs> this, the CIA raping children and sexually assaulting children, and they're not being prosecuted? Had sexual contact with a two-year-old and a six-year-old. He was simply fired. One employee purchased sexually explicit videos of young girls filmed by their mothers. He resigned. One employee estimated that he had viewed up to 1,400 sexually abusive images of children while on agency assignments. Not sure what actions, if any, were taken by him. One contractor arranged for sex with an undercover FBI agent. I think that you mentioned that. Posing as a child, he had his contract revoked. One trying to take over my mind, putting thoughts of pedophilia. It's, like, it's disgusting, disgusting to take this whole thing into account so much. I make it so dramatic. It is dramatic. It's somebody trying to end my life. It's somebody trying to end who I am as a person. It's somebody trying to take over my mind, putting thoughts of pedophilia. It's, like, it's disgusting, disgusting, disgusting things. Occasion, I was told I was going to be shot in the face. And it was an older guy. He was like really, really disgruntled and pissed off. Yeah, she's she gonna be shot in the face. You know, some like an angry ass old person. You know, then a couple of days later, a female said the same thing. Gonna get shot in the face. You know, stupid shit like that. But what I really noticed is with the voice of skull, it's a bunch of females. You know, and I'm like, bro, <laughs> really? You're not a woman. What? real woman would stalk another female or sit back and allow that to go on. You you really think they they think it's nothing wrong with them. Basically